Are you ready for the Hello. first question? I'm Gary Crowley, and this is the uh, world-renowned, uh, the celebrated photographer, uh, Lawrence oh, Watson. It's good to see you. And this... Is Alfie. This is Alfie, who might be, who might not be uh, joining us. We'll have to see how it goes. But of course, um, Lawrence was the um, the man who um, shot the uh, the Liam Gallagher first pretty green shoot down there oh, yes. on Brighton yeah. Beach. I'm sure we'll talk about that a little yeah, bit later. Did. And I mean, you know, you might want to put your um, fingers in your ears, Lawrence, but he's done all of the greats. Um, Public Enemy, Grace Jones, The Smiths. Um, Paul Weller, Oasis, I mean the list goes on and on and on. We're going to be talking about his career and we're also going to be giving some advice to any aspiring photographers and uh, basically putting the world to rights. I concur, guy, I concur. Now let's go right back to the beginning, always a good place to, um, to, to begin the, the, the start. For people who don't know Lawrence, you mm. know, give us a little bit of a taste of your background, uh, your upbringing, and you know how you got the music bug you know what was your okay. first sort of reference point the beginnings that's the beginnings um he's, been asleep already, <laughs> he's, he's, had, he's had enough of this story not that story again <laughs> um scruffy herbert irish catholic school william york cali road who produced john lydon as well but john lydon didn't stick it out he left he bottled it yes <laughs> and um love of music there my stepbrother was writing yeah Doing a bit of darkroom stuff for my art O level, we all cheated at. And um, and a friend there tuned me into sort of love of photography at a darkroom in his friend's house in Stanford Hill. And um, we started printing some work because we'd all use overhead projectors and cheat on our art O level. And um, and then my dad actually said, Look, you're not going back to do A levels, you're going to get a job. And not far from here, a stone's throw from here, 5 to 25 Rivington Street, I started on a YOP scheme in a photographic lab there. And they were very good at encouraging me. At the early stage, I wanted to be a documentary photographer. I wanted to be a Magnum photographer. Um, as you said, put the world to rights. So that was all the British movement marches, and the anti-Nazi league things, the, the, the you know, what was the Bobby Sands ones, the old blanket. Yeah, yeah so yeah. this is the late 70s, so, yeah, the early so I was 80s. Yeah, 17 and wanted to do that. But of course, that was the time of punk and everything. So everything was pretty political back then as well. So <clears throat> we got lots of gigs and, um, <clears throat> and I started taking cameras to the gigs, and my stepbrother Dave started writing for the NME as well. So, so was that, there a sort of defining moment where you know you took a photograph and you know you thought, do you know what, I can do this. I'm good at this. No, I'm waiting for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there. I'm working but on was that. There, what, what, was there one where? Well, you... the first picture that got printed in the NME was uh, Sud Buzz from Sudden Death Cult with Sex Gang Children headliner. No, no, Sudden Death Cult headliner, Sex Gang Children. And, um, and that got printed in the NME. I think I I'd had a knockback probably about a good five or six times where they were out of focus, bad, and just too far away. So, yeah, no, and finally one was printed. So, yeah, that was probably a, a, that must have that been must a moment. an epiphany moment, maybe, yeah, that you, I can do this, I can take pictures and make, and make some money from it as well. That's, uh, but, I mean, we could talk about, you know, until the cows come home, about the people that you have you know, had the, um, you know, the kind of pleasure, the fortune to, um, to kind of photograph. I mean, if I, if I throw some, some names at you, um, you know, what, what the, you know, the kind of first memories, um, you know, that, that kind of instantly spring to mind. So, you know, fancy yeah. playing that? Yeah, no, I'm trying to play that Okay, game. so what if I say there's a great shot of you um, holding your camera with the Smiths um, yeah. up in Manchester. Manchester yeah. So, you know, Tell me the, the kind of memory, the story behind, story that, yeah. behind that picture. That's a cold day in February, I think. We went up there, but that was always good working with Morrissey because give Morrissey his credit, he would put his research on his, on his locations and that was Albert Finney's father's shop that they actually shot. And I only found that out recently. I thought it was just a similar, but it's Albert Finney's father's shop. I think he was a bookmaker, his dad, yeah. wasn't he? So it's the old bookmakers, which I, it, and it's, it, I think it had gone to on the seed and stuff but it's got DHS estimates written on paint on the um, on the inside so it obviously changed hands into something else which even added added even more sort of romance to the whole thing but yeah no it was yeah it was a freezing cold day but more we did a bit in the Britannia with their lovely flock wallpaper and then we went down to Salford's Lads Club as well and did a little bit there but no, it was it was good a freezing day but it was a good day yeah and it was always good and I worked with Morrissey a lot and then did interesting drug for him the cover and stuff and the solo stuff <clears throat> and then I think we had a falling out because he brought a gun along to one of the sessions for the interesting drug session. I didn't bring the gun along. 
And I took some pictures of him, and I've used it. And then they did that terrible book. Who was the guy who did it? Johnny Rogue and the man he said he wanted hit by a bus or whatever. Well, I was not young and naive, so I sent the box with contact sheets over and stuff. I'm going to get pictures in a book. I'm going to get pictures in a Smith's book. And of course, they took the contact sheet and they scanned the contact sheet. And I never knew they took the picture from the contact sheet. And then Murray, press officer, hit the roof and that. Murray, <laughs> Murray, she's having kittens for you for that picture. I know they're more in his mob, so I don't need to encourage people he'd done. And then all those years later, that's the irony of time, isn't it? He's photographed with a machine, a Tommy gun on his album cover 10, 15 years later. So, yeah, that's... But we won't go there about that anyway. I mean, so, so, so when, you, when, when you turn up in, in Manchester, I mean, you know, that day with, with, with the Smiths and going around to those, you know, iconic locations, I mean, how, you know, but, I mean, is, is there a way that you kind of have to kind of sort of play it into, you know, making them relax? Yeah, you want you know, that in the I mean, picture, I mean, yeah. you know, do you sort of, you know, try and be their pal or do you just sort of, yeah, is it kind pal. of like, you know, just being an observer and letting yeah. them kind of come to you? I'm or? probably more observer because that's my love is, is of documentary, so that's why it's always worked with most of the people who are real musicians. Yeah. That's when I, when I go into studios and things like that, I become a fly on the wall. I don't want to be involved. I don't want to be Charlie Bananas. I want to be the the coffee mark on the back of the amp sort of thing, I want to disappear. So, and then you document the magic. It's bringing that attitude in the photo sessions. There's fine fashion photographers, yes, be in Charlie Bananas, but not music and documentary, well not documentary photographer anyway, I can't, can't be doing with that. So no, that's I th hopefully my asset. And I'm, I, by nature probably, I am quite shy and quite sort of unassuming fella. <laughs> and, um, and I like to be that when I'm working as well. I don't like to bring that. I'll join in at the end of the session and we'll go for a beer or whatever. I definitely won't be doing the session. I don't want to be influencing the mood, but comfortable, yeah. You want to make people feel comfortable, so of course. So do you go with ideas then sometimes? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, you've got to go with ideas. <laughs> but then it doesn't, it doesn't mean those ideas actually happen or come to fruition. The band might look and say, well, I don't like it. I'll get a knockback. But then I might have plan B or plan C. And that's where the enemy, I'd always turn up. If this was the location, yeah, I would have turned up two hours beforehand. I would walk around every alleyway and every nook and cranny to try and find something interesting. I could turn up the hotel and say, I ain't going out, it's f***ing cold. Luther Vandross did that to me once. It was snowing in New York, it looked magical, he had a white fur coat on. It would have been a brilliant picture. But Luther in his voice, I can't go outside, Lawrence, I can't go outside. I thought, Fair enough, Luther, you've got your voice to protect. I'm not going out in the snow, but I see it sometimes. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. You mentioned a little bit earlier on some of the, um, the hip hop, hip -hop stuff. so you were yeah. lucky enough to, um, to, to, to photograph. Yeah. Can I chuck some names at you and um, you know, ask you for, for your memories of, um, you know, I mean, yeah, Run DMC, I mean, I was lucky yeah. enough to see them um, in concert. I mean, um, what memories of, of oh, you know, interviewing that, those guys? That was my first time in America, went with Pamela Hunt and, um, no, Regine, sorry, Regine, the old U2 press officer, and, and she was very sweet. She knew I'd never been to America before. Freezing cold Chicago, and we went and saw the gig. There was 40 people watching them in a student campus. <laughs> a few Kangol hats at the front. And, um, yeah, no, I, I don't think it was funny Americans and black Americans wondering, it was with Paolo, why these white dudes come over from London, from England, to write about us? They, they couldn't even get a piece of the local student. In rags, <laughs> what's going on? So, oh, well, maybe we get it over here, and <laughs> maybe they'll never get it over there. And I think they appreciated that, and Chuck D appreciated that from Public Enemy. Yeah, even as they got bigger, it was lovely that he said, "No, you guys used to come over here and write about us, and we couldn't get arrested in our own country." And they, and he always gave us time and stuff to do the pictures and do an interview. He said, "No, because you came over and wrote." I mean, we talked about that eclectic sort of mix of, um, you know, subjects that, 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 that you've done. I mean, um, there's a great photograph of, um, of Tom Waits as well. Yeah, that was um, good. Yeah. Again, you know, when he yeah. sort of defining kind of memories yeah. of, of that, that day, because, great. I mean, you did work with him a few times, <coughs> didn't you? Yeah, no, I was lucky enough to work with him. Yeah, no, he was one of my, here we still is, one of my, yeah, one of my great heroes as well. Because I was trying to do, he took, he got everybody to meet in a, in a like an um, Hispanic coffee shop in, um, in Compton to intimidate. But I went with Sean O'Hagan, who'd grown up in, old, in the trouble. <laughs> I'm living in Argyle Square in the knocking shop next to a brothel with a pogue. So I think, well, all right, so I'm okay. But then I really wanted to, I was a bit lionising him a bit there. So I think, we're going to get on the lash, aren't we? We're going to get on the lash, sort of thing. He's ordered a lemonade. And I thought, oh, yeah, maybe you don't drink all the time in <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> thinking, we're going to get on it. And, uh, he was really good though, and he, he produced the Dicer. Because so I was trying to do, again, I have the little ideas going on, the lovely Coppola film, Rumblefish, where he runs the pool hall. 
and the clouds, and they speed, he back projected clouds on the background, so the clouds are moving really fast when he's giving his piece in the film. So I had this idea, I'll get, lovely, I'll get him behind the glass, and I'll get the clouds reflecting and stuff, so my homage to Coppola. And uh, the, then he did, he did a brilliant thing, he just pulled out two dice. And I love that lovely Luke, Luke Reinhardt book, The Dice Man as well, it's a brilliant book. And he produced the dice, and then that made the magic of the picture. And then what actually happened in that picture that I did, and then that's the mad serendipity, the things that suddenly an accident happens in photography. The reflection of my body suddenly had his head, and if I printed it really dark in a certain way, it looks like he's got this macabre caricature head floating on this weird body. And they think, how are you done? That was my reflection, and I could print it dark most of the time. And then it was only later on I printed it dark for quite a long time. Then I printed one light in the dark, and I thought, hang on a minute, that looks quite funky, that. And then started it printing it, and you could see my body in it. So the later ones, so I didn't actually print it that way initially. I, mean, I you just concentrate about, on him. You talked yeah. about the happy accident. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, happens, I would imagine that those w would have happened yeah, with happened. film. I mean, what, what about yeah, now, yeah. as far as? You know, digi digital no, is concerned. I mean, do they still happen as much? Well, probably not. No, no, because film, you're, you're open to lots of things happening in the film thing, from the camera to. Because I did a thing, what did I do it? I buggered up one of Paul's concerts and stuff, thought I'd pick my bag of film up, and I'd actually gone with one roll of film in the camera. So I got into the pit and got the coin out, because I'm used to processing films, and I, I prized it back open and brought the film back open, and I shot the film seven times, and that became the cover of. I can't remember, it's one of Paul's brush that became the cover. And Noel guessed it that night, sort of thing. Everybody thought, well, done, Matt Dayton's on guitar and stuff. But I just shot one roll of film because there's lots of black. There's areas that don't get exposed in it. So I just kept moving the camera around and shooting different areas of it. So um, hmm. let's talk about Oasis and um, you know, yeah. meeting them for the first time and um, photographing them for the first time as well. I would imagine that stays with you. Yeah, it did, yeah. Although the first the first session wasn't with any of them in it anyway, it was Gary Storrs. <laughs> I think Simon, Mr. Halfon, who we know, um, was designing the sleeve and no one needed that graffiti, they don't believe the truth. And they wanted it on some garage doors out somewhere on the end of the northern line or something. So it was just before Christmas. I don't know what happened. I don't know if somebody had blown them out or something. They said, look, we've got this, we're doing it. And I said, are you interested in doing it? I said, yes, before Christmas, it's always handy to have something, something for the kid's bicycle. So um, I went and shot that. And I just shot it on lots of different films, basically, and lots of different cameras. Linhoff panoramic cameras, I got a hired a, a fish eye lens and stuff. And so I just tried to give him lots of different options because I didn't know what, what they actually had in his mind with the um with the um the lettering on the garage doors. And and Noel went for and I did some lovely big prints of it. And um and Noel went for the one that was a black and white, yeah, thirty five mil just on that old nick on I had with a fish eye lens. And, so, and he said it looked like a bit of a snow yeah, a snow globe. <laughs> I said, Yeah, 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 I'm having that. And I got a lovely deep sky with a lovely deep red filter to get the sky really rich. And that became the album cover. And then lovely Emma at the office said, look, everybody's really happy with what you've done for the sleeve. Do you want to do their press pictures? And I said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but you did, but you did. There's that sort of iconic picture of, um, of the band, I think, in one of it's the a, London parks, isn't it? Yes, there? it's in Hogarth. It's where Paperback Riot was done. So tell, so, us, tell yeah, us the memory, the yeah. story behind that one. Well, that was done twice, because the first time, Poor old Andy Bell looked like a garden, working in the garden centre. So <laughs> and then and Liam was wearing a bright white coat. Looked lovely the coat, but he just jumped out of the picture, and it just didn't. It didn't. But Noel was good about that. If it didn't work, we'll go back and do it again with the right clobber on as well. So and we did, and we did some bits with the lilac cover on Primrose Hill. We went back to to Hogarth's. And um, yeah, and it worked, and we got the picture the way it should be. Yeah. And when you mentioned Liam there, I mean, I mentioned mm. in the introduction about the um, the photographs that you took for the, um, yeah. you know, the yeah. first well, a good pretty mm. green shoot. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, what, what's your memory of being asked to do that? I mean, would you have had a brief, or you know, the, um, the memories of the day most important? Yeah, mainly it was uh, it was our homage to Quadrophenia, so that was it. I was sort of away and running, sort of thing. We'll do the alleyway, we'll do the games, we'll do that, and they brought a load of lovely bikes down as well. I think they had copies of the um, the original bikes. So um, I don't think they put petrol in them. I think we had to wheel them everywhere. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, no, it was a good day, yeah. And it was an early start, and Liam didn't have a problem with that because we were trying to get the right the light coming up over the cliffs and stuff in the early morning. And um, yeah, yeah, I think it was just, yeah, it's just... Is he accommodating? I mean, does he sort of listen yeah, to no, ideas? Does he have ideas himself? Or Yeah, not he normally say, say if he doesn't like something or something's not working and stuff. So, He'll let yeah, you know. Yeah, let us know, yeah, yeah. 
But I think, yeah, they get on there. I think it's a love of the same sort of photography and periods of music that I do. So that's always good. That always normally makes it, because normally my points of reference are the points of reference that they've grown up with and stuff. The lovely 60s films, 60s music and stuff. And that's most of my, I do go back to the old Dr. Caligari and all that nonsense as well sometimes. But I'm still most of the time my reference is the 60s yeah. and 50s films and things. I do like my cinema, so yeah. I mean, I another think. strong, you know, presence is um, is Grace Jones. I mean, you've t you know taken yeah. some amazing pictures of uh, of her. Um, well, you know, what memories of, of of meeting her for the first time, and, and and you know, photographer taking her picture as well. Oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, no, no, I'd grown up listening to Grace as a youngster, and it was yeah, no, it was. A, I didn't think I'd get the gig. It was from Meltdown. She'd done it for I don't know. It was massive attacks. Meltdown. They Parliament and Grace, and took some live pictures. And then my friend Mark Jones at Wall of Sound Records was there, I'm going to put Hurricane out, the third album. And, and I said to him, oh, look, I've got some live pictures, if you can use them, and I might get a bunch from it as well, that would be great. And he said, no, we're actually looking for a, a photographer for the press. And I said, yeah, well, Mark, it's going to be one of the fashion boys, and it's going to be one of the names. And I said, I'm not going to... He said, no, put, put, your, put your hat in there, <laughs> and you'll never know. And I did, and suddenly Mark called me up a week later, he said, Grace wants to work with you, Lawrence. And meeting her for the first time as well, getting her confidence. I mean, did that take a bit of time, or was there was there an instant connection she, there from the off? Yeah, they were both mad, so that was good. <laughs> that helps. But that helps. But she was good because she she works with people and she works with lots of artists and musicians as well, from Sly and Robbie to, to old Jean Paul Goud, her old husband and stuff. And she lets them do what they do. So one bit with the picture that, that's quite famous is the three heads, and I just done my homage to Goud, where I just done a locked off camera and did the rude boy on one side and the feminine and the male, and I just had a wolf's mask and a sheep's mask and an empty plate, and I was kicking off to that. But she said, no, no, it's not, no, maybe one, and I don't normally do loads of posty things. And um, she said, no, the, the empty plate, maybe one more head, maybe one more head, and a lovely one with a with, um, smashing tambourine sort of thing, or um, cymbals, and she's screaming. So I said, okay, and got a retoucher to put her head on the plate. And then it became the three graces as well. So that was it. And it like, and it went, wow, wow, wow. And, that, and I got, Grace gets credit for that, but that was the one thing. And she lets you get on with what you do. And, and, she, and she likes the party along the way as well. She'll be six or seven hours late. But she said, Lord, it's all right, I kept Bailey waking 10. <laughs> but she was doing things as well. And people don't see that about people doing things. Who have to, she had a music video that somebody would shot and delivered. And it wasn't up to her standard. So she sat in the edit suite for eight hours until she was happy with the video. Then she came to the photo session. So you don't get those stories a lot of time. You think, oh no, she's asked, she's doing that. No, she has her work and she has an image and an image she has to protect. So I, I respect that, I respected that. And she turned up and we worked all through the night till eight in the morning. I mean, you, yeah. you mentioned um, you know Mr. Weller a little bit earlier on, and, and that attention to detail. I mean, yeah. Noel's got that as yeah. well, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, they care about their work. They, they, yeah, they love their work and they make sure that it's done to the nth degree and stuff and I respect that. That's what good yeah, good craftspeople do. They care about their work and they, they make sure it goes out in the right way and, and, and to the right standards and stuff. You don't put out cheap and, and and you know, sort of looking back at, at, at this sort of you know amazing career. I mean, and it has been as well. I mean, you know, the the, the, um, you know, the photographs um, that people are going to see in, in in the exhibition. Mm. Actually, that's a question that I've yet to ask you. Tell us what your criteria has been for choosing the photographs that are going to be part mm. of your exhibition at the Pretty Green Store in Manchester. I was, I was trying to find some new ones, basically, because I have yeah a lot of people seen that book that I did with Adidas many years ago. So. He was trying to find some fresh images. There's a new Tom Waits one. There's a Bowie picture that's never been seen before. So uh, some fresh ones. Some jumbo contacts I did. I practiced at another photographer's place, Peter Anderson. I did lovely big blow-up contact sheets. Again, I went all Jackson Pollock with those. And he had a lovely enlarger I rescued from a skip. And he's got an old woolly, so he had space to put it in there. And I printed on the floor just jumbo contact sheets. And then he had these lovely big trays. So I just got, like, floor cleaning brushes and stuff and just painted the developer all over the things. And then and did bits with paint on them afterwards. So that's it, you can kind of, so I'm going to put a couple of those in there as well. And then, um, yeah, and then there'll be a bit, obviously a bit of my hip hop, a bit of Grace, a bit of Smiths, and yeah, a bit of Liam, a bit of Noel, a bit of Oasis. And, um, and I've chucked some eclectic ones in there. I've got Bill, I did a show in a, a fashion place in Covent Garden. I made their window in like stained glass windows and stuff. So I've got Bill Grundy as well and things like that. And I've got people that people don't know, Billy Childish and stuff. There's lots of people that, yeah, people don't know that I've done and stuff. One last question. If you weren't doing this, what do you think you would have gone on to have done? Any thoughts? Or was it always going to be photography? Probably bank robbery like my dad, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been very good at it.
It would have been your lookout dog. Yeah, exactly. Get out. <laughs> Lawrence, it's been fascinating talking to you. Good luck with the exhibition. And the exhibition, by the way, opens on February the 11th at the Pretty Green Store in Manchester. And it runs all the way through until early March.